In this tutorial, we're going to talk about basic shape editing in Revit, actually mass editing. I'm going to go to the Massing tab, click In Place Mass, and it opens up my Massing toolbar. So I'm going to go to my Line command, and um, I'll tell you a little bit more about reference lines later, but for now I'm just going to use the basic Line command. And I'll pick a square, draw that, and look at it in 3D. And if I grab that square and click Create Form, it extrudes it into a cube. You see that the, I'm given a shape handle which I can stretch it and if I select a face I can stretch that face. Um, what's kind of cool about this is if I select a line segment I can also do that and if I go even further into the bones of this I can grab a node and stretch that. And you see what I've done is uh, actually created a warped surface which can be tricky sometimes. There can also be um, sort of destructive editing of the of the, uh, of the form that you've made. If I tab in and find a segment, I can delete that, and I'm left with a triangle in this case. Or if I take a few steps back, if I grab the top shape, it actually destroys the, the shape almost entirely. It's a little bit unpredictable what it'll do, but you'll sort of get to know it as you use it. If I grab this remaining square, you'll see that it actually wants to give me a handle to allow me to stretch it back into a square again. It's kind of interesting. So I'm going to do another thing, which is make a square on the ground plane that intersects with the one that I did originally. Select it. And hitting the caret at the bottom of the Create Form tool gives me two options. I'm going to select Void Form. And you'll see that it's going to create a void form that intersects the solid form that I've already made kind of takes a bite out of it. Um, the whole point of nonlinear editing in Revit with voids and forms is that you don't want the voids to unintentionally cut through another form. So, if, and I'll show you what that means. If I go again to my line tool and select the, the, the rectangle command, create a rectangle on the ground plane, create form. This is a form which is pretty hunky-dory. There's nothing wrong with it. If I go in and, and try and selectively grab the, uh, the void form that I created earlier, and I'm going to try and drag it through this new form, what you're going to see is that it won't affect that form. I have to tab to find that void form. And then once I've got it, I need to kind of tab. I'm going to zoom in a little. Tab until I've found that edge of it. I'll drag it through and you're going to see that it's not going to affect that void form. And the reason is, is that in quite a few of the parametric shapes that you'll make or within the family editors, you're going to want void forms that affect a solid form specifically and not others. So it will always only affect the thing that it's touching originally unless you tell it later to either cut or, or not cut other forms. And the way you do that is to go to the Modify tab and I'll, I'll select Cut. What I'm going to do is tell, I'm going to tell Revit that I want this, uh, this void form to affect my new solid form. I think it's thinking quite a bit right now because I'm doing a video capture and it's, my computer is struggling to record this all. I hit cut geometry and I come down, it's going to kind of more quickly find the void because it knows I'm doing this kind of an action. I select it and I select the other form and you see that it's now cut it. And This can be quite um, interesting, it, it can also be quite volatile. You'll see if I tab and I select this form and move it, it actually it looks like it sort of dragged that void form along with it and it, it didn't reside with the original form, which is kind of interesting. So this is basic massing, and remember when I finish this mass, I've now got this kind of object which I can grab and drag and move around, but the object is really, it's a vessel containing various things. It's containing two solid forms and two void forms.